Yes, it's time for another classic retro movie review. Today I'm heading back in my time machine to 1955 and the Universal Studios release of Tarantula. Um, starring, um, it was directed by Jack Arnold. It stars John Alger. It stars Leo G. Carroll. And it stars Maria Corday as the token woman. I'm being facetious, of course, but she sort of is. Uh, this is a bit of a classic, a black and white uh, science fiction film from that time when a lot of classic American science fiction films were telling stories about the bomb and the terrible effects of radiation and the things it can do to man and beast. We think of films like them. We think of things like The Incredible Shrinking Man, which incidentally is going to be my next classic retro movie review. Shh. Tarantula is slightly different in that the titular Tarantula isn't a creation of war. It isn't a creation of Bad technology, as we might deem it, it's not a creation of nuclear fusion, but it's actually the result of an experiment by a well-intentioned scientist, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Deemer, who's played by Leo G. Carroll, who at this point was sort of um, quite an advanced, uh, in, of advanced years, but 10 years later he was to uh, be well known across the world for his role as Mr. Waverley in the classic spy adventure series, The Man from Uncle. Here he's a very kindly a scientist working in the desert. I think it's supposed to be Nevada. And the film starts with a man crawling across the desert, clearly in some distress. Um, he collapses and reaches out, and we see that he's horribly deformed. Um, it turns out that he's the uh, scientific partner of Dr. Dima, played by Leo G. Carroll. And together, they have been devoting their lives to creating uh, a serum that will provide... Um, well, basically, which will cure... Um, lack of food supplies across the earth by increasing things to gigantic proportions. We see in early sequences in the laboratory that Jeff, Dr. Dima has been very successful, hugely successful, one might say, <laughs> uh, because we see uh, giant uh, rats and giant rabbits and, worryingly, a giant spider, a giant tarantula uh, hidden away behind in the cages. And uh, there is a fire and an explosion in the laboratory for reasons that I won't give away in case you haven't seen the film. And uh, Dima assumes that all his specimens have been destroyed. But as we see in one particular sequence, the tarantula <laughs> um, escapes through the broken glass of its cage and um, sneaks out into the desert, wherein begins properly our story. Um, this is sort of classic 1950s science fiction. It's, it's a film that's actually aged extremely well, certainly visually. I think we look, think today of CGI monsters and CGI creatures and things. But this is a film that used a real tarantula and filmed it and then superimposed or overlaid onto the uh, film location background. And it looks damn good, particularly in nighttime sequences with crawling over the hills and attacking people. Uh, it, it goes, the basis of the story basically goes on that a local doctor, Hastings, played by the hunky John Agar, um, he realizes that something peculiar is going on, especially when uh, the local community starts to be terrorized by something. Um, a local farmer finds that his uh, animals have all been attacked and, and stripped bare. Um, a couple of uh, locals are also dispatched quite in quite a horrible fashion. Um, we see their bones have been stripped dry and there's a strange sticky Noxious, noxious substance nearby, which uh, investigations reveal has come from some sort of insect or, as we know, spiders, arachnids. And it transpires that the spider, as it feeds, is growing and growing till it becomes this massive bloody thing that's crawling across the country, causing carnage and chaos. Um, it's, it's a great film. If you've never seen it, I would suggest you go and pick it up because it's great fun. In the way those 1950s films are, it's about 80 minutes long. It gets in, gets on with it, and gets the job done. As I said, there's, there's sort of this token female character, female scientist, Stephanie, who is uh, played with great, great vigour by um, Maria Corday. And she's the character who comes in in all these films and sort of falls for the hunky hero and he falls for her. And if you've seen any of these 1950 films, that's always played in quite a coy way. There's no suggestion of anything improper going on. It's just that these two people like each other. But this isn't the film that concerns itself with that and that never really goes anywhere. It's all about the bloody big spider, which does terrible things. Of course, it's the 1950s films. So we don't see anything graphic. It's quite nasty. We see scenes of sort of bleached bones and animal carcasses and things, but we don't see any anything horrific, but there's some very nicely done scenes of early animatronic, if you like, of the spider sort of 
I'm going to say face, but I don't think that's quite right. The spider and its sort of um, claws advancing on people um, and them screaming, screaming in terror, as they would. I certainly would. Um, but it's not graphic in, in any way because it's a 1950s film and it's all about suggestion. And that, I always think, is the best way with horror films and science fiction films, really. If you want to do something nasty, don't suggest it. It works a lot better. But it's a great old film. It just rattles along. And as I said, the visuals are really good. Uh, the spider, I mean, because it's a real spider and not a model, it has that extra element of <laughs> about it when you see it on the screen. It's better. I watched it in the cinema room on that big screen that you can't see at the moment because it's in front of me. But I projected it on there and last night. And yeah, it did make me feel a little bit e because I'm not a spider fan. And if you're not a spider fan, you'll have trouble with this film because it look, does look so realistic. The scenes of it moving across the landscape, they've even managed to give it sort of shadow because you'd think that that sort of primitive film technology they would just superimpose it on the land and the hell with it but it really looks as if it's there because you see the shadow and you see it looming and it's filmed in such a way that it, it really looks like a genuinely horrible thing and there's a terrific scene at the end where they, they realize that you know, the human characters realize what the threat is and they try to plant explosives down on a road in the desert and the spider just appears over the hill and walks and it's it's brilliantly done really very well done and you sort of think well, if they did a film like this today, it would be flashier and bigger and more bombastic, but wouldn't necessarily look any more realistic than this does. And the fact that it's in black and white adds to that sense of creepiness and menace. And very sensibly, the first 30, 40 minutes, maybe the film, you don't really see much of the spider it's hinted at. And that's again, works in its favor because you know it's called Tarantula, you know there's going to be a big spider in it, but it keeps you waiting as the story slowly envelops, or develops even. And it's quite nice because Dr. Dima, um, he suffers an unpleasant fate, shall we say, and you feel sorry for him. It's not like a normal boo-hiss bad guy that you're glad to see him get his just desserts because this guy and his friends, they were just trying to do the right thing for humanity and it went horribly wrong, which is, as I say, slightly unusual for 1950s science fiction film, which is all about the terrors of technology and the horrible things men can do. Here, it's men who are trying to do something for the benefit of mankind and they, they suffer because of it. Uh, so it's a great film. It's available now on Blu-ray and DVD and so on. I'm watching it currently on this new uh, two-disc set uh, which has been imported from Australia. I'm reviewing this for Starburst magazine, which is why you'll see that we have the incredible shrinking man coming up next. Um, but I think it's still available pretty easily if you go online and look for it. If you're a lover of these classic films, I, I, every time I talk about an old film, I talk about the, those sort of late night double bills I used to watch. And that was, this was one of them. And I love, everyone loves a creature feature. And this won't frighten the horses today because it's, you know, it's 45, 60 odd years old, but it does stand up very well. A lot of monster movies, and them, the giant ant film is one of my favorites. But the ants are very clearly huge prop things, they don't look like ants because you know their models. It's them is a great film, and that's what I'm going to do at some point. But this is a real goddess spider, big ass spider, even you know, put onto real locations. It looks great, so it's a terrific little film. If you've not seen it, I do recommend you go and see it. It's great fun. But as I say, if you're an, an arachnophobe, it will genuinely chill you, despite the fact that it's an ancient old black and white film. Uh, Tarantula gets from me a big fat 9 out of 10, because I do think it's a great film. As it's available now, if you want to take a look at it. Right, hope you've enjoyed this slightly rambling uh, video. Uh, if you do like it, and did like it, and like this sort of stuff, because I do retro stuff and new stuff and stuff hence the name of the channel you need to press that um subscribe button down there thank you for the new subscribers in the last few days by the way much appreciated leave a comment down below as well if you've seen tarantula what you think of it and any other classic 1950s sort of uh, american b movies that you think might be worth a look because i love them i absolutely love them that's me done uh, incredible shrinking man coming up soon and until then or anything else that i choose to do in the meantime you know what they say keep taking the stuff